can take a moment to study the, the composition, the flowers, the fabric, to get familiar with it and with the areas of darker, darker areas and lighter areas. Take some temper time and make sure to have paper towel in a view. Okay. Not a lot of temper time, just start testing your, your how thin is your paint and start working with the paint. Do you see what I do here? Yes. Yes. Any questions? Just let me know. Okay. Okay. We start to have an idea of where the, the horizon line is, is going to be and is on the back where the, um, the, the fabric here on the, on the lower side is oh, here. here. Okay. And we have some, some movement of the fabric. But for us to have an idea where we have the horizon line, we can just very thin. Remember that it's always like two thirds uh, from the, the height of the canvas. Uh, we can do it like here. Mark, mark something there to know that that is our line. And maybe it's too high, right? Because we have a lot of flowers coming here. No problem. We you did it there? Okay. Mm -hmm. No problem. We erase it. We put some temper time here. Now, I see the base more towards the left side, but you may see it differently. Maybe you see it more, more in the center or more to the right. So remember to forget about the, the part on the right there, the lights. You have to see the flower base, the, the flowers and the fabric below it. And from there, try to position your base. Maybe not exactly in the middle, even if you see it in the middle, mm -hmm. because it's going to not be so interesting, the composition. So it can be a little to the left, or if you see it more to the right, a little to the right. And, okay, we have to see up here from the horizon line, the top of the flower base, around here and then I don't see the lower part the, the bottom no, I don't see it either yeah I mean you don't okay mm -hmm. well but to have an idea we can uh, let me see I'm thinking it is good that you see it or not okay let's do it that you don't see it but we imagine that it's there we know it's there so we mark it here. And from there, okay, we have the neck. We are going to try to draw the neck of the flower base. And it comes wider here. And then again, back here. And the other side. Something like that. If it's not perfect, 
I'll hold it. It's very imperfect. <laughs> it's okay. 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 Then um, when when we when we advance in the painting, we're going to have. Um, for what you tell me, you also have fabric here that's covered in this part of the flower. But we can do that later. Okay. 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 And then, um, now we are going to start to apply the, the underpainting. And we don't need to do the stems now. But we are going to work on the... On the um, um, the shapes you see, forget that they are flowers for now. You see shapes and, and, and value. So we start with the darker values that I see them most of to the left because it's the, the area where, where we have shadow. Mm -hmm. And you probably see that too, mm -hmm. with a different perspective, but you, you see that too. Okay. And I also see some darker areas here above the flowers and here so wherever we see darker areas we start to, to work on that and okay let's start with the background if, uh, if we imagine that we have a wall on the back mm -hmm. we start there and then we come forward with the flowers and then here the, the fabric down here so again we use some temper time and we go for the brown As you you can look at the at the composition there at the display and look at the canvas and look back at the display and the canvas. Now, here on my canvas, I see that it's, what I see there is probably a little darker, so I'm going to add a little more brown, make it a little darker, so we have more contrast. And there are the areas where you see a lot of light, try not to paint. Leave it the, the areas where the light is, is more light. Leave the canvas white for now. If you already apply some color, you can take it out. Thank you. 
If you get to the base and you, you feel that you're going to lose the, the lines of the base, go back to, to draw it again with a little more dark, uh, more brown, so you don't lose the, the, the shape of the base. Here I see that I came too low on the dark here because I have flowers here, so I'm going to take some of that with some temper time, my paper towel. So you can always correct things. You can even touch the paper towel to, to break those lines because we are going to have like different things going on over there with the flowers. Don't apply more temper time for now, let it dry and continue with the other areas. Mm -hmm. And when you finish with this part, we can do a little here and then we go back for the flowers. We can do here the... Um, so we have some movement here with the fabric. In darker, darker areas in the folds here, the darker areas and the lighter areas. So try to apply the paint as you what you see there. You try to do what you see, or as close as you can. Okay, oh, yes. So behind we have like a very dark line. You can see, not the, not the black fabric, mm -hmm. but even here against the pink fabric, I, I want you to try to mark that line that is um, uneven. Let me see. Uh, we take some uh, uh, brown, dark brown, a little temper time, not a lot. And let's see that line that is right behind the, the burlap. It comes here. Okay. 
and goes behind. For me, it goes like this. For you, may have other shape. And then comes again here. And just leave it there. And if you see other lines like that, for example, for me, this one here continues um, right here. And maybe a little here. And then I have some burlap fabric that covers my base here. It goes like this. Just a suggestion of where, and then later we are going to work more on that. Okay. And you, Monica, just dis dissolve a little that, that dark uh, that line. Uh -huh. um, okay. And now we go back to and up here for the flowers and so we start with the darker areas again so we have okay i see a green flower that the left side uh, is like almost half of it is very dark and it's around, we have to see where it's located in the composition for me. It's here. So I start with the darker area that is not that dark, so more dark, darker. I suggest the, the shape of that flower in the darker area of the flower. And then I have more dark here. This is part of the stem of the dark pink little flowers. I continue with the dark. And maybe some green here that is very dark. It seems to be leaves. I don't even see what it is. It's probably leaves on the back, very dark. And then maybe uh, I did the darker area of that part, but on the green flower, I have a lighter area that is light, but not, not as light as the pink on the background. So I dissolve a little with temper time and I uh, apply some paint, but it's going to be lighter than the darker tone. So maybe and I start to get familiar with the shape of the of the flower, so it's a little rounded there. And if the temperature is not dripping, try to correct that. And the same with the rest of the areas where it's not that dark, but it's still dark. Maybe at this point I want to add some stems, very dark, here. But as a suggestion, because we, we probably lose the stems again when we paint the background. Okay. Where are you? Are you here with the stems? Mm -hmm. Okay. You see that we have water there. Yeah. So we have to suggest the line here where the water is. Okay. What do you see happen to the stems when they enter into the water? Uh, do they look the same as up there? They look bigger. Yes, they look bigger and 
and even some of them may be a little off like uh, you have one coming here mm -hmm. and then it doesn't continue in the same line it mm -hmm. goes thicker and so let's suggest that too Okay, when you finish with the stems or, or suggest the stems, don't work too much on them, then go back to the flowers and again uh, try to see what other areas in the flowers are dark and apply some more dark. Um, okay. I may not do the white flowers yet because we have to paint the, the the background here but i i see the the pink flowers on the right they have some dark maybe not as dark as, as this flower the green flower but it's some dark there so the, let's start suggesting the darker areas on the right side too dark. The yellow flowers have an, an area there that is darker, but not much. Just make a difference in the values. Not everything has the same value on the color. We have some leaves here and there, a medium value. This is lighter because closer to the light. Want to make a thinner line, you position the brush like this, like from the edge, the edge of the brush. I'm going to add more dark here in, in this area, in the area of the green flower. And follow the shape of the flower and surround it.
I put my water a little bit higher too. Yes, you yeah, you can change that. Sometimes for the purpose of making the composition more interesting, you can change mm -hmm. things. Uh, we are not doing hyper realism. Mm -hmm. So for the purpose of doing the composition more interesting or to have more balance, you can change some things. Okay. Okay, do you think you have this area dry enough or it's too wet, this area here of the background? Here it's a little bit wet, but it seems to be dry here. Let me see how wet. Okay, let it dry a little, Monica, and mm -hmm. we're going to start applying some color to the... What color do you see on the fabric on the background? Mm -hmm. Pinkish. It's pinkish, right? So mm -hmm. I want to do some light pink. But uh, it is pink, light pink, but on, on top we have that dark area. So uh, we are going to use red and white to make pink. Mm -hmm. So much red on my hands. Oh. Okay. Uh, red and a little red, and, uh, and now we are going to do the mixture now. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be only one pink. It's going to be at least three pinks. Remember that we do at least three colors. Mm -hmm. uh, the darker pink on top is going to, we're going to use this brown, this mix of brown and a little blue that I, do you still have some yes, mix yes. of brown? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so let's make, let's, ma the, let's mix the, the three different pink. So let's take uh, some red, red and a little brown of the same brown we, we are using here clean your your palette knife and a little white and we start mixing until we see something similar to the dark area we see in, in the pink fabric similar if you see that on the palette is too dark, we add more white. So it's going to be like a grayish pink. And we keep that mixed there. video we mix um, cadmium red dip with a little white and with the brown we've been working the bandai brown with a little blue so we mix red brown and a little white and we get the darker pink of the fabric on the background that is the, the darkest pink 
and now we go for the middle tone again with red and white and very little brown very little now we, we are going to compare this new pink to the previous pink and it has to be a little light uh, lighter the darkest pink the middle tone and now I'm going to make the lighter pink on the background with uh, well maybe I can use some of this middle tone Oops. oh I have another one there are more there I use a middle tone a little of the middle tone and then add more white for the lighter pink Have it there? Okay. Thank you. So here we have the three, um, the, the three different pins: the darker one, the middle tone, and the lighter one. Okay. Thank you, Martin. We start with the darker areas and the darker areas of the pink. You don't need to cover everything, just let the underpainting show a little. Because later, maybe next time or today, we go back and add more layers. And it's nice when the underpainting shows a little uh, underneath. And keep looking at, your, at, at the setup and see what areas are dark and what areas are... Start with the darker areas and then we go for the middle tone. And my paint is very dry, so I'm going to use some medium and mix it with the paint. forget but this white area I left here is a yellow flowers so mm. if I feel I intrude too much there I can take it with temper time or in the paper time Don't go down here because here we have the, the, the other kind of fabric, the other color, and the pink is only on, on the, the, the say like the back wall. Now some of the pink shows uh, 
through the, the glass. So they apply some here too. And when you feel that you have all the darker areas covered, let's go for the middle tone, the, the areas of middle light. You can just uh, wipe your brush on the paper towel. You need more medium? Uh, no, I got some. Okay. When you are ready for the lighter pink, just clean your brush and start applying the areas of lighter pink. blocks of paint, the three tones of pink, you apply when where you see that they they are on the on the setup. And remember that then after you you place the pinks where they you feel they are, then we can come back and blend. Okay, so at the beginning it may look like separated, the different colors one from each other, but then we come back with probably with another brush, with probably the same brush and we I'm going to blend. But for now, just apply the coat.
let's apply some color to the burn mark. And we are going to change the brown a little. I want to use burnt amber. It's a little lighter than Van Dyke brown. Mm -hmm. Burn amber. Burn amber. And then we are going to apply some yellow ochre. Ochre. But it, probably this this is not much because it's, the pigment is very strong. Naples yellow, I like this yellow a lot. Naples yellow. This is very nice, very nice for landscapes also. And burnt sienna, this is another brown, burnt sienna. It's another brown, a uh, reddish brown, and you see this has a lot of oil. Sometimes the, the different, wow, it's a lot of oil. Okay. Let's start mixing some burnt amber. We're going to make again, no? We have, um, again, we have the darker areas, the darker values here, and then maybe a middle tone in some areas, and then the, the areas were more light, here and here, okay? So to start, let's mix three, um, let's say brown or beige, three, Using a little of burnt amber, well, not, not that little, yeah, a little more, yeah, little. burnt amber, then some yellow ochre, maybe, maybe a little less than the burnt amber, with a less amount. and a very little burnt sienna. Okay, let's start mixing those three colors. And let me see if we add the, the yellow maples now or later. oil sometimes some tools come like this okay okay that is going to be this area right do you feel it needs to be darker no somehow I see some blue there oh. yes this one yeah the ultramarine blue. So add a little hint of blue and test and see how it feels. Okay, let me do the same mix you are doing here. So we have some similar color with the Burnt Sienna is in, in this brand and in this tube, and this uh, uh, is very rare. But sometimes you, you buy another brand or in another time of year the same brand and it's less red. So, yes. So you have to test and see how you feel it. Um, okay. And maybe I add a little blue. Did you put blue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to add more brown, more okay. more of the burnt amber. Yes. Mm. 
Now, because Naples yellow has a very light value, we are not going to apply to this mix. We are going to leave this as the darker, darkest value. And then we take one third of that to the side. And we're going to do the middle tone. Let's say the middle tone is something like this. Mm. We can add uh, a little more yellow ochre. That one, yes. And maybe a little of the Naples yellow that is has a very light value. But not much. A little. Let's, we always start with little and then we can add more. So we test a little of the yellow, uh, Naples yellow. And you have to feel a difference between the two. This has to be lighter, but notoriously lighter. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now we are going to make the lighter value. We take one third of that one Oops. and more uh, Naples yellow. Maybe a little more, can add a lot of uh, Naples yellow. Martin, do you have the three colors? This is for the brown fabric. We have the darker, darkest value, the middle tone, and the lighter, a lighter, I would say the lightest, but not, because maybe next class, we are going to make a lighter value than this one for the highlights of the fabric, but not today, because we are going to go back and forth with the, with the back. Okay, now we have the, let me see, yes. Can you tell the difference that this is darker, middle, and lighter? Yes. yes. And you can even do it a little lighter, a little more yellow. So when you see the, the so that is going to mark the difference on the uh, foldings of the fabric and the light. So now again, as we did with the pink background, we are going to apply. Start with the darker areas on the burla fabric. A medium, yeah. Yeah, very little, very little. Okay. Where you prefer, Laura, here or here? Oh, you have it there. Yeah. Okay. Where you have your medium? You can use the brush that you use for the brown. You can wipe it and use the same brush you use for the underpainting with brown. If you feel it's too dirty, you can uh, use your temper pen to clean it. But then wipe it and try to uh, dry it with the paper towel. Be careful with temper time because if you put temper time there, it's going to take all the paint you have. Mm -hmm. Very strong.
you are ready for the middle tone, wipe your brush, remember to wipe it, continue. Sometimes you mix the color on the palette and then when you apply to the canvas you're not very satisfied with it. If you feel large or if you feel, for example, like I found it too dark my middle tone, so with the brush I brought some yellow ochre and yellow ochre and, and burnt sienna. Okay. So I changed it a little. That is if you feel that, but if you feel it's okay, you continue. Don't be in a hurry, just I, I show you when you when you are ready for the lighter areas of the burla. You you left some areas unpainted, so the lighter. So there you start applying right there the lighter, lightest color, the lightest brown. And if you don't see a much difference, you have to make it lighter. Have to feel the difference, and then we blend. Don't worry, just apply in the dark, in the lightest areas.
and you don't need, need to use much medium with this. And this mine is very soft and actually it's nice to start seeing some thicker paint. Mm -hmm. And actually next time when you come, because it's going to be dry, it may even give it some texture. You're going to paint on top of that, more layers, and it, it creates a nice, interesting texture. I hope I don't lose my, my base. Do you still see the, the lines of your base? <laughs> yes. Some lines, yeah. No, no. We'll draw it again if you lose it, but uh, you can keep it better. Yeah. Inside the base, we I, at least from here, I see some light, very light brown, uh, from the reflection of the light. So let's add some color inside the base. We have the stems, but we are going to draw them again next time. So remember to keep the shape, the base here is round, so keep the, 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 shape, the direction of the lines. Don't cover everything with paint, Oops. <laughs> because we, we have the stems and... and there's a lot going on in that base, actually, mm -hmm. with the light. And we continue outside the base. time I'm going to think now I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to continue with the green on the on the flowers and, and the leaves Take your time, I'm not getting you in a hurry or nothing, just prepare the green. Are you going to show it, Martin? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me clean my brush. So, what green we are going to use and how? I may use the Van Dyke brown I have here to make the, to make the darker green maybe. Okay. Now, now we have to study if we have one one green, one kind of green or we we'll have different greens. I mean we have different lights. you see the greens? Do you see the same green in everywhere? Not the light, because we have darker greens, uh, darker areas, lighter areas, but 
To me, it looks like the same kind of green, but with different intensity. And for you, Monica? Mm -hmm. I think the green flower is lighter. The green puffy, mm -hmm. puffy flower. Yeah. I kind of agree with you, uh, Laura, that is, maybe it's not exactly the same green, but it's, it's almost the same yes, green yes. with different lights. But, but because I want you to, to try different colors and to make a, a more a difference between maybe these leaves and this greenery here and the flower, I'm going to make you use a different green for the, uh, these leaves mm -hmm. uh, and a different green for the, the rest of the okay. flowers. But I see it almost the same, yes. Okay, so we are going to use to work on the greenery. Yellow and Let's make the green that we have on the left sub green sub green. Um, do you have brown left? The first brown, the dark brown, and dark brown. Yeah, that one. Oh, this one. Mm -hmm. We are going to mix. Let's start mixing the sap green with uh, this bandai brown, the dark brown. If we have, if you have the, the mix, the first mix, you can use some of that. That used to have some bluers, but if not, you can use bandai brown. So sap green plus bandai brown, a little bandai brown to make it dark. darker. You see Martin there? That is too light. Let's make it with a little more Van Dyke brown, a little darker. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can use another plate, another, uh, if you don't have a space, okay? And now we need to do Okay, let's focus on the left side because it's too, we are going to, to complicate it with the, this green, we do it later. This green, we, we do the darker, we, we already have the darkest one with sap green and Van Dyke brown. And now we take a little of that, one third, and we are going to make, we are going to make it lighter using cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow. Start with little and then if you feel you need more, you use more. And test and see how it looks. So
cadmium yellow pale. Cadmium yellow pale. We mix it to the green we have here. And we have a middle tone. Now the middle tone, uh, you can see it clearly here in the big flowers. The darker tone, the middle, like in the middle, and then the lighter one. And we we'll do, after this, we do the lighter one, the lightest color, of the lightest green, adding more yellow. Yes, um, we can add white, but sometimes white, if we add white, it's going to be too cold. So let's add more yellow and we make it warmer. Because yellow have a very light value. Not as light as white, but it's very light. And again, we have to see the difference because be between the darkest green, the middle tone, and the lighter one. If we feel we don't have a lot of difference, we can add a little more yellow and make the, the difference bigger. Okay, let's clean a little the table. I was going to tell you that. Perfect, yes. So we show a difference between the three rings. And maybe now, yes, we can change the size of brushes. Maybe now we can go for smaller brushes. very small brush because that is more for the final details. Let's do some middle size. You can try to find it too so you get used to finding the brush. No, it's okay, uh, but that's a little Are you ready for the green yes. on the left side? Mm -hmm. So we have. These are little flowers with little uh, leaves, but you don't need to make the details. But this and this and here um, for the pink flowers and then the big flower. And we are going to start with the darker areas of the, um, the darker green. So we start applying as we see it there, wherever we see the darkest green, we start applying. And we may not need a lot of medium, but if you need medium, do you have medium? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to use the other tones of green. 
especially in the big one that we can see surrounded and try to follow the, the shape and the curves of the flower. Continue with the darkest areas of green. use a medium and maybe now is a good moment at some point to start bringing some um, stems down actually I see green on the stems but that in some areas I don't know you but I see some brown also you see some brown on the stems mm -hmm. a little bit yeah okay but now since we have the darker green we can go down and bring some stems back down to the I lost my water okay I can, if I need to, I can mark my water with the, the brush that had the brown maybe to have an idea where is it, where it is. And we keep bringing some stems down. Do they flow well? If they don't, if, if the paint doesn't flow very well with the stems here, mm -hmm. you can use temper time. A little, very, be very careful. But um, to make the, the lines thinner and to flow um, easy, easier. At this point, be careful with temper time. Just wipe it after you touch it and then go to do some stems. And remember to make them thicker below the water level.
it's just some stems and then go back to the upper part of the flowers and the leaves. Very nice. Okay, when you feel ready, go for the middle tone and go for the areas where the green is not that dark. And we start applying the middle tone. Even in the lightest area of green on the big flower, for example, you see that you, you have middle tone mm -hmm. in between the petals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, mark that because when you, uh, at the end, when you apply the lighter green, the lightest green, you are going to have um, that depth that the flowers have because of the middle tone or because of the darker tone depending what you apply there Maybe bring some middle tone to the stems.
And when you're ready, let's go for the light the screen. Okay, the areas where you see the, the, the light hitting on the green, on, on the left. We are working on this green. You just apply the light the screen. At some point, you have to forget what it is that you're looking. Because if, if you think, oh, it's a flower, it's a leaf, you, you start, your brain starts thinking, what is the shape of a leaf? Or, no, you paint what you see. So it's like pieces, uh, uh, areas of, of color. So whenever you see this light green, you just apply it. Maybe you if you see a certain shape, you can try to do that shape or not. You can use a little thicker the paint, no problem. No medium, I don't think you need much medium for this. Green, green, probably white, light green. Uh, okay, uh, now maybe we can, uh, if you already apply all the light green, mm -hmm. uh, or you finish to do that, no, no hurry, we have ten, 10 minutes. Um, but after that, maybe we can bring some of the, some of the brown, mm, which brown? Um, well, we'll probably have to make another brown for the stems. Well, we can do it later. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what else you feel you can do now? You want to... I'm thinking if you are the stems of the white flowers or not. You can suggest them. But for that you will need, now yes, a, a very thin brush. 
and you can suggest them using um, let me see I don't see the, the green I think it's the light the lightest green but in some areas you have dark green because you have shadow and very dark so you can use the dark green and the lighter green but you have to add um, to add white so you can use some of these and you can I'm, I'm going to try to find a brush for you but um, for some stems the darker green and for others you take some of the do you still have the lighter green yes so you have some of that and add white okay. let's I have to teach you well not not make dirty the white okay. so we take some white and you mix it with the lighter green. Maybe it's too too much. Okay, we can make three colors again. This might this can be the lighter one for the stems of the white flowers. Then we have the dark one already here. And maybe we can make another one with the middle tone and less white. So we have the darkest green, again a, a middle tone with the lighter green plus a little white and then more white on the third one. Okay. And with that, I have to find a brush. Let me see if I brought the, the thinner bra the brush. Temper time, yes, because the medium doesn't work well with that, it's too thick, and we need to uh, to be smooth and thin for those delicate stems. But be careful with temper time because it can wash everything down. I'm going to use this one because it's a little difficult, like too thick. Whenever you don't have a thin brush, you can use one flat and use it like on the side. Mm -hmm. But let's see, um, well, maybe this one is okay. Maybe this one for you. And now we, whenever, whenever you see. Um, whenever you see the the stems of the white flowers, start suggesting them. All over here, here, maybe, maybe here. Um, with some temper time, be careful with temper time. Just use your paper towel to test and see how it moves as you as you do the line of the stems, and also. The stems have like little branches. They are not just sticks. They are, uh, you, you can do just suggestions. You don't need to do, because maybe uh, in the next class we are going to go back to the background and maybe you paint some of the stems. So just to have a suggestion and uh, to place them in, in the composition. Now, sometimes when you have to do this 
very thin lines. If you go too close, it, it, it gets like um, stiff. So sometimes you may want to go uh, farther from the canvas and let your arm flow a little as you draw those thin lines, just to practice. a little more temper time, just test and see how it feels. Thank you. 